خليه يجي الجزائري هلا اعزموا اللي بده يجي معنا اهلا وسهلا عمار تعال هون 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 عمار هون جنبي 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 وين الرئيس؟ الرئيس Thank you very much for being with us. It is a historic day today, where for the first time after almost six months, the Security Council adopted a resolution calling for an immediate ceasefire. And we in the Arab group, from the first day of this aggression, were united around three objectives. The first objective was an immediate ceasefire to stop the aggression against our people. Today is a significant step in that direction. The second objective was to have humanitarian assistance up to the need of our people in the Gaza Strip. I believe the ceasefire will open the door for the implementation of that second objective. And the third objective was not to allow the crime against humanity from forcefully transferring our people outside the Gaza Strip, although they have been internally forced to move from the north to the center, to the south, and then to other places in the Gaza Strip. A ceasefire, immediate ceasefire, would allow our people to return to the places where they were displaced from. So I am proud of the unity of the Arab group. I am proud that our representative in the Security Council is Algeria, working closely with us, reflecting the demands of the Arab group, and I think today we prevailed. Those who say that the Security Council is not enforceable or not mandatory, give us a break. We go to the General Assembly, they say it is not enforced or binding. We come to the Security Council, they tell us it's not binding. We do not buy that. Security Council resolutions are binding. And if Israel is not going to implement it, then it is the duty of the Security Council to use Chapter 7 to take measures and punitive measures in order to make them obey the resolution of the Security Council. We are not done. We salute our people in Gaza and in all of Palestine. All of our people, all of their leaders, we are one as Palestinians. We survived this ordeal. We will rebuild Gaza. We are very proud and resilient people. And thank you for covering our story during these five and a half months, and we are not done. We will go back to the Security Council tomorrow. We will ask them to defend the brave Secretary General who, have, who is with us today in refugee camps of the Palestinians in Jordan. He is the one who went to Rafah twice. He is the one who met with the leaders of Egypt, of Jordan, of Palestine, of all the Arabs, calling for a humanitarian ceasefire from early after the aggression. And he today called from Jordan, implement the Security Council resolution that was adopted just a few minutes ago. We salute him. We will defend him. We will defend the agencies of the United Nations. And we will ask the Security Council tomorrow to issue a statement or a position defending the Secretary General and the UN agencies. And we will not be done. We will continue the march, and we will start working on a draft resolution to make sure that, Ga that Rafah will not be invaded. Rafah should be protected. We should not create a horrific humanitarian situation or crimes in Rafah to push our people outside Rafah in the direction of Egypt. So we are not done. We will continue working. The unity of the Arab group is playing a tremendous role in the unity in the Security Council, especially among the 10. 
and we will continue working and we will keep you informed. Talal, you are first, number one. Thank you so much. Um, what's your comment and what the American ambassador, Linda Thomas Greenfield, said that any release, any ceasefire must be accompanied by the release of all, unconditional release of all hostages, knowing farewell by many, and they argue that if all hostages were released, there's nothing to stop Israel from going the whole way. Well, Israel has to abide by its obligation and the charter, and it has to immediately stop the fighting. This is what the resolution called, immediate ceasefire. Any member can interpret as they wish, but the law is the law. The language of the resolution is crystal clear, an immediate ceasefire. Therefore, an immediate ceasefire has to be put in place. Also uh, calls for unconditional immediate release of hostages. Now, there are many people in the Middle East say, "What guarantees are once the hostages all hostage, hostages are released? What guarantees do we have that Israel will not go the whole way to Rafah, to more destructions? More, what stops Israel from doing that?" I understand the frustration of our people, and they have the right to be frustrated from the international community that dragged its feet for five and a half months before they agreed to a ceasefire. But the language of the resolution is crystal clear. Operative paragraph one starts from demanding an immediate ceasefire. The second part of the sentence, it is, it is not conditional upon the first part. It says, and also, it calls for the other part. The other part was reflected in all the resolutions in the Security Council, adopted in the Security Council, and the resolutions adopted in the 10th emergency session twice in the General Assembly. All of us are saying immediate ceasefire, and in fact, our brothers and sisters, Egypt, Qatar, are negotiating with the United States and others, and negotiating and mediating with our brothers uh, Hamas, the release of the hostages and exchange of prisoners. So that principle is not being rejected by all of us, provided that there is a release of the Palestinian detainees, especially those who are serving uh, life sentence. And I think that that will happen, and we hope that it happens very soon, and we are behind Egypt and, uh, and Qatar, who are playing a very uh, important role in the mediation and the negotiation in order to have a deal. So that is not something that is rejected by the Arabs or by you know, those who are negotiating this uh, agreement on that deal. You asked a lot of questions before, <laughs> but if there's a woman before you that wants to ask a question, would have the... Right. I don't see anyone. Okay, you, thank you, Ambassador. You're the last one. Thank you. Anadi Satuma from Al Jazeera English. During the meeting, Prime Minister Netanyahu indicated that he was going to cancel a visit to D.C. in reaction to the Security Council adoption. What is your comment on the fact that it seems that negotiations on the ground for a deal are going in the opposite direction, to not towards a deal, in reaction to this resolution? I don't know, really know what the negotiation on the ground entails. I'm not involved in it. My job is to work at the U.N., including the Security Council, to produce resolutions like the one that we produced. That is my job. Now, with regard to the relationship between uh, Netanyahu and uh, the current administration in Washington, D.C., we leave it up to them to respond to his, uh, you know, uh, disrespectful way of behaving with the country that is responsible for the survival of, of Israel and arming Israel and giving it, you know, ammunition and giving it a billion of billions of dollars to continue the atrocities against our people. They have to stand up and, re and respond to him. That is not my job to respond to that. It is their job. Thank you very much for being with us. I, I understand, 
I understand that uh, you go to the General Assembly and it's not binding that you come here and it's not binding, but we just witnessed how two different ambassadors interpreted this resolution in two different ways. I think that interpretation is in the, among lawyers and uh, legal experts over you know, this issue. There are differences of opinions, but the law is the law. The Charter demands from all member states to honor and respect and implement Security Council resolutions. And my brother Mahmoud is the legalist among us, but let me also add, just in case that a country rebel against Security Council resolution, it makes then sense that the Security Council that has tools available to them to resort to Chapter 7 to take measures in order to force that rebel country to comply with Security Council resolution. But my no, brother uh, Mahmoud can respond. Uh, th thank you. I mean, the ambassador has summed it uh, perfectly. Article 25 of the Charter says it clearly that the, uh, uh, the members of the, of the United Nations shall carry out the decisions of the Security Council. The language used in OP1 is demand language. It's a binding language which is based on Article 25 of the Charter. As such, it, ha it is a mandatory resolution that has to be carried out. If you're talking about Chapter 7, Chapter 7, when you use Chapter 7, it is for enforceable measure. If a country violates international law in a manner that threatens international peace and security, you can use force or impose sanctions. This is what Chapter 7 is about. So that's, that's, uh, that's the difference. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you Thank all. You Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.